This magic shape may have saved a tech giant from complete collapse and going out of business. You're probably thinking to yourself, how is that possible? Well, after they started using this shape, their stock price skyrocketed. What is this shape? Why do so many companies use it? And how can you create it in DaVinci Resolve? Let's make something great and talk about squircles. Hey guys, William Justice here. That's right, this shape is called a squircle, or some people might call it a super ellipse. It's not a regular rounded rectangle, it's something completely different. It's a much more natural, organic, and modern shape. It's a cross between a square and a circle. A squircle. If you look closely, you'll see a gradual change in the corner radius as opposed to your regular rounded rectangle or a rounded square with a corner radius. And if you continue the rounding, you're gonna eventually get a circle. The corners on the squircle can be really subtle or very rounded depending on the shape you're going for. So do you have any idea how to create this shape in DaVinci Resolve? It's not really easy. I've created a new effect that makes it super easy to use squircles in your animations and video projects. You can download the squircle shape effect from my website, buildjustice.com. I recently reorganized the website, so hopefully the effects are a lot easier for you to find. Um, they're all available on the homepage, categorized by different types. So after I show you how to use this new effect that I created, um, we're gonna take a look at some of the different companies and how they're using the squircle shape. And we're gonna talk about how the squircle may have saved a giant tech company from complete collapse. I guarantee you know the company very well. We're also gonna jump into Fusion. I'm gonna take you a little bit behind the scenes and show you how I created the effect. I think there's some really interesting techniques for you to learn um, in how the squircle was set up and how I built it, including some options I did to make it really easy to customize and adjust the shape. To add a squircle, click the Effects tab. You can choose to add a squircle shape or you can apply the squircle as an effect. Let's start with the effects. Open up Effects, William Justice, and click on Shapes, and you'll see there's a squircle shape. To apply it to a clip, all you need to do is take the effect and drag it onto the clip. And we've turned the clip into a squircle. Let's go through some of the options over here on the right-hand side. Click the Inspector to open up the Inspector with the options and make sure that the Effects tab is clicked. The first setting lets us adjust the shape of the squircle. We can make it more square or more rounded. A little bit later in the video when we get into Fusion, I'm gonna show you how I set this up with the shape. It's kind of interesting um, what I did here to make this customizable. You can adjust the size and blend of the inner part of the squircle. You can move it around, so let's make it a little bit smaller. Maybe we want to uh, put it in the lower right-hand side. We're gonna take it and move it over with the position here. Let's go ahead and put a background behind this so you can kind of see what, what we have. Okay, so I've added a background um, behind the squircle. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go through a few more customization options. Make sure the uh, make sure the clip is selected, and we're in the effects area. This was the position. We can also adjust the angle, and then you can also adjust the image position within the squircle, and you can use the size and position to adjust this as well. And last option is for the border. There's a border blend. We can we can adjust the border size. Then there's a border position and length and also rotate the border. And if you want to adjust the border color, you can use the option down here. So if we wanted to set up to a gradient, there's also an option for the border size. You can kind of make it a little bit bigger or smaller to create some interesting effects. Let me zoom in here. Okay, now let's check out the squircle shapes. These are gonna be shapes that you can just add on top of things. Let's go back to the effects area and we're gonna open up generators, William Justice, shapes, and you'll see we have a regular squircle shape, so we can drop this on. It works similar to the other one. We can adjust the roundedness, adjust the size, add in a border, adjust the border blend. You can see we have a border now. Set the border color. And we can also adjust the shape color within here. So we'll move this one over to the side a little bit. Let's take a look at this other one, this uh, Just Squircle Extra. So what you're gonna see is when we get into Fusion, you're gonna see how these squircles are made, and they're made with some curves, and we, if we stretch those curves a little bit further than the squircle wants to go, we get some really interesting effects. Let's take this one down here and stretch it out. So it looks just like the other one, except we can take the shape and move it a little bit further. And in Fusion, you can see this is pulling out the handles for the curves a little bit further past where the squircle goes. Do the same thing, adjust the size. And in this one, let's bring up the border. And we're gonna take down the shape blend so all we see is the border and make it, uh, let's make it white. So we can kind of see what's going on here. And we got these interesting shapes. So this is the Just Squircle Extra. If you're enjoying my videos, make sure that you like, Subscribe and comment below to let me know how I'm doing. Always enjoy your feedback and questions. Okay, so what company may have been saved by the Squircle? 
It's up for debate, but on September 13th, 2013, Apple Computer Corporation released iOS 7. This was a major change in their iOS operating system for their iPhone. Apple dramatically changed the design of their home screen, including their icons. One of the subtle changes to the icons was that they removed the standard corner radius with the hard, rigid edges, and they replaced it with a little bit of softer, rounded squircle shapes. And this gave the iOS 7 icons a slightly more modern, organic, and natural look. So did the squircle save Apple? Honestly, who knows? They could have tanked and gone out of business if they would have kept the old, dull, standard, rounded rectangles. But without a doubt, if you take a look at the stock price, it's clear that ever since they introduced iOS 7 with the Squircle, their stock price has skyrocketed. So I'm gonna say yes, go Squircle. It's possible this small little bitty change tricked us all into giving Apple a bunch more money. So where else are you gonna find Squircles? If you take a look around, they're everywhere. You see them in graphic design, physical products, iPhone, Android, app icons, Android phones, smartwatches, all kinds of products. For instance, check out the Instagram logo. Okay, we know a little bit more about Squircles now. Um, you can download the effect from our website so you can create them in your projects. Let's open up Fusion, and I'm gonna show you a, little, a few of the tricks that I did to create this effect. Okay, here we are in Fusion. We're gonna set up some Squircles. Now stick with me here. Um, this is a little bit different. It may seem a little bit complex, but I really think there's a lot to learn here. Um, there may be a better way to set it up, but this is how I ended up doing it. So we're gonna start out with a background node and we're gonna connect that to the media outs. It's a good starting point. We've got a black background. To make the squircle, we need curved edges. To do that, we're gonna use a polygon node. Now, we could use the polygon mask node, which would work, but the shape polygon ends up working a lot better because its, um, its aspect ratio is one to one, so it's gonna be easier to set up our curves. Click in the node area, hit control space, and type S polygon. And this is our polygon node. With that selected, control space and S render. And that's our polygon. We're gonna take that and put it into the background. Now, this is the place where we would we could draw our polygon. So if we click on the polygon, we can click our points. Um, this just show you how it works. And to that's a, that, that would be a basic polygon. And we can highlight the points and click this button right here to smooth them all out. And we get these handles. And this is where we could take it and you could drag these out to create something that looks like a squircle, but it's really difficult to get it exact because there's no way to set the exact distances on these handles, um, at least that I couldn't find it. So we're gonna have to do a trick to do that, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, these points aren't really evenly spaced, so let's, let's clear this out, and we're gonna create something that's a better starting point. So we're gonna get the poly polygon, we're gonna reset it. We'll right-click in the viewer and do polygon one polyline and choose create, and we're gonna create an ellipse and we give it an initial width and height and hit OK. And there we go, we have an ellipse. If we highlight all these points, all the handles are the exact same spacing. So let's take this, click this icon here to select all the points, and we're gonna drag it so that this thing is pretty close to the center. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to do what we wanna do. To do this, obviously, we would want to take these handles and stretch them out. If you hit, hold the Shift key, you can get a vertical direction here hit shift and it's gonna be horizontal. You can't bend it the other way. So we could do this, try to get these all even and the spacing right, but it's still pretty difficult. Decent approximation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put up some guidelines that are gonna help us out. Um, this is just to do it the manual way, but there's a better way where we can get the exact stuff. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. So let's do another shape node. I'm gonna do an S rectangle and an S render. I'm gonna take the rectangle and bring the width all the way down. Like that. So we're gonna create some guides that are gonna help us out. To do it, to do it this um, this manual way, and we're going to take this offset. We're going to move it over. Then outside of this render, we're going to add a mirror. We have a mirrored line, and we're going to take these mirrors, take the output of the mirrors, and merge it right on top of the output of this merge two. And we're going to rotate that by ninety degrees. And check that out. We have a grid that we can use to do this. Now you see that the um, it looks like it's a little bit closer down here than it is up here. So that means that our our polygon is not centered. So we're gonna select the polygon again, select all the points, and try to get it in here pretty close. So that's fairly close. Now, now that we have these guides in place, we can select the polygon and do the, so we can maybe stretch this all the way out to that point right there. So I'm just trying to stretch it out to the edge of where those guides are. If you wanted it smaller or bigger, you could change these guides as well. And we'll do this last one down here, click this point, holding shift, and we can stretch, grab the handle and stretch it out. And we'll disable the, let's see, well, let's go take a look. And it's not quite right. So we, we could, you could keep messing with this with these guides 
to try to get it closer if you needed to. Yeah, okay, you can see this one right here. We didn't stretch that one out enough. We missed it, so we'll put that in there. Okay, let's make a better squircle. We're gonna to try to get a little more precise and have a lot more control over the way it looks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the first frame, go to frame zero, right click in the node area, hit control space and search for S polygon. So we're gonna use another polygon and we're gonna add a render node and connect that up. We don't need this anymore, so let's go ahead and view merge four. So we need to create a polygon and we're gonna use the right click menu to set up a polygon that's all, but that's the exact proportions. So we're gonna right click near the center, click polygon two, right click near the center, choose the polyline, create ellipse. And we're gonna set the default width and height. Now we have something that's pretty close and highlight all the points and drag it to where it's close to the center. We need it to be centered to get our adjustments the way we want them. That's fairly close, but we wanna make it exact. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the polygon two and copy it. Now we're gonna open up a text editor. I'm gonna use Windows Notepad. There's a lot of different text editors you can use, but Notepad works great. And we're gonna paste it in. Now this is the fusion code for this animation. You'll see here the keyframes on frame zero, we have these points here. So the, each one of these X and Y points corresponds to the X and Y points from our polygon. So we have four points right there. And these are the four points. So we're just gonna hand edit this to get them exactly the way we want. You'll see here that this X is negative 0.12. And the Y is this, is this really, really small number. So this is really effectively zero. So this point, this point is negative um, 0.12 and zero. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hand edit it to make sure it's right. There's other way, you, you can do this if you publish the points, but this is a really quick way to do it. So we're gonna make this, everything that's close to 12, I'm gonna make it 12. Everything that's really small, I'm gonna make it zero. Do it for all the points. And last one, we'll make that 0.12. So let's play with these handles here. This point right here is zero and negative 0.12. So that is going to be, it's a 0 0.6. So let's make this um, 2.6. This ends up being a real small number with the E minus 18. So a lot of decimal points down. So we're gonna hit zero out that. We're gonna make this one 0.26. This is another small number. So we're gonna make that zero and we're gonna leave this one the way it is. So let's go take a look at what happened when we took this handle and moved it. You can see right here, this handle moved way up here. So we basically, with this file, we have control over the exact positioning of these handles. There may be another way to do this um, from the user interface, but I couldn't find it. So I just went ahead and handed it the files to be able to make these exactly the way I wanted them. So we're gonna go through and anything, I'm gonna make this um, 0 0.07 for all of these like that. So I'm just gonna go through anything that's close to 0, 0, anything that's close to 0.7, I'm gonna make it 0.7. Okay, let's copy this and we're gonna replace this polygon, paste it in and take a look at it. So basically this is what we had before. So let's start playing with some of these handle values and see if, see if we can create something interesting. I'm just gonna do a search replace for 0 0.07 and make it 0 0.57. All right, let's, uh, let's copy this and paste it in. Get rid of polygon two and put in our new polygon two with the adjusted points and put it into the render and let's see what we get. All right, we get this crazy, crazy shape here. So what's going on here is the handles have been pulled really, really far. Let's go ahead and select all the points. You can see these handles have been pulled way out and that's caused us to create this shape. So what we really need to do is be able to adjust these handles all at the same time to create the shapes we want. Now there's not really an easy way to do that, but there's a trick and a workaround. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some keyframes to do this. All right, and let's go to like frame, uh, Say 160 there. And all we gotta do is take one of these little points and grab it. And what, we've, what we're gonna be doing here is it's gonna be adding a keyframe for us at this frame. So let's copy the polygon two and go back to our notepad and paste in the update. And look at this, at 160, we have a new, a new entry. All right, so we have the keyframes, we have the points at frame zero and the points at frame 160. Let's just adjust the points at frame 160. To do that, all we gotta do is copy paste. I'm gonna copy these four points and we're gonna paste them into the points for frame 160. And let's adjust the handle. So everywhere it says 0.57, we're just gonna take that down to zero. It's gonna be transition from the handle 0.57 to zero. Kind of play with these to figure out what worked. 
copy this. We're going to select all and copy it. And let's paste it into Resolve and see what happens. Check that out. There we go. So we it starts out kind of crazy like that. And I'm going to go ahead and put these hand, show the handle so you can kind of see what happens here. So we set up a transition from these big handles to basically no handle. So that's going to be a real sharp edge. And watch what happens as we play the animation. So effectively what we've done is we've set up a composition where we're able to adjust the position of the handles based on time. Shape the, as we play the animation, the polygon is changing shape. So there we got kind of our squircle shape and then we get a little bit crazy. And this is where we could um, select the polygon, uncheck the border and give it a little border width. Okay, now that we have this, how do we control it? What we can do is outside of this S render three, we can use a time speed node. So hit control space and search for, and search, search for time speed. All we need to do is set the uh, let's view merge four on the time speed. We're going to set the speed to zero. So basically, it's not going to let anything happen, let anything go. And adjust the delay. So basically, it's holding the first the delayed frame. And to adjust this, we just can change which frame we want to look at from the animation sequence. So this is how I set it up. We're able to get those exact curves and control them. Um, like I said, there may be there may be another way to do this. I couldn't find it. So if you if you know of something, let me know because I'd be kind of curious if there's a better way to set this up. And that's an animation. So that's basically how I did it. Um, I did I did some hand editing and set up some keyframes and use the time speed you know, to let you select which frame that you want to view the uh, the squircle on. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're uh, on Team Squircle. If you download the effect and use it for something interesting in one of your projects, uh, let me know. I'd like to see what you're doing with it. Thanks so much for watching. If you're enjoying my videos, make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment below. And I got more videos coming soon. I got a, a bunch of things lined up. Just got to get them out and I'll talk to you soon.